I guess, title was QJuice Plugins for Renewal Exploration. Um, just for some context, it's really just around working in an exploration company, uh, dealing with a lot of users that probably aren't high-end, regular GIS type users. Um, had a lot of problems as a GIS administrator with those sorts of people. So coming up with some custom in-house plugins which were essentially going to make my life easier and their life easier um, as sort of part of that process. So just for a bit of context, some of the problems, um, data. We have so much data and exploration. Um, it's coming from so many different sources. Um, you're trying to get it into a centralised location. So we use the SQL Server database trying to get that data from you know, multiple people, multiple organisations, contractors, wherever it's coming from, pushing it all in there. Once it's in there, we want to obviously do something with it. Um, and that's where I guess QGIS is probably the strongest part of this process. That's our visualisation tool, that's our querying, it's our analysis tool. So trying to get that working in the right way. Quality of the data, obviously very important. A lot of time wasted finding data. Um, when I first started the organisation, they were actually transitioning from map info file based to QGIS with an actual database. So trying to port all of that data across, trying to put it somewhere where people could find it easily um, is very difficult. Everyone has different versions of the tracks. Everyone's got a different version of the drilling. Um, yeah, it makes life pretty tricky. Um, and then ultimately what we're trying to do is work as much as we possibly can out in the field. So any time that data problems cause exploration delays, um, people get very angry investors with people in my department. Um, so we're just trying to streamline all of those processes as best we sort of can. Um, just a little bit of context on us. We are Australia-wide, so we are also dealing with data coming from multiple locations, so lots of different MJ zones, uh, different jurisdictions, different requirements for reporting, different formats. You know, every state likes to format the tenement data differently. Every state has different heritage and environmental requirements. So taking a lot of that information, trying to do, I guess, the best job we could of centralising it into one sort of standardised format so that when our you know, geologists and our teams move around the country, everything seems the same way for them. Um, I guess, where do we stick it all? This is sort of where it all comes into it. So pulling data from, obviously, those external government type departments, pulling in data from you know, lab results, all those sorts of things are coming in as well. Um, all the different geological systems that I don't know anything about how they work. Um, and the idea is we're trying to ram all that into different you know, databases, um, file server locations, those sorts of things. Um, we actually use FME, so it's not open source, um, to do a lot of that moving of the data. Um, but essentially at the, I guess, the end user side of it, um, we are Merger Maps. So Merger Maps is our main sort of field-based tool. And then QGIS is our, definitely our visualisation tool. So um, how can we use that as best as possible to get the most value out of all of that data that we're actually collecting, as opposed to it just sort of sitting in databases and nobody really knows how to access it. So over the year, or years, last couple of years, um, we've basically gone through the process of building this toolbar. Um, it's, a, I guess, a, a single plugin, which is nice and easy with multiple tools and functions on it, it's basically a collection of plugins, um, to streamline that process. So trying to do things like making it easier, obviously, to find the data, um, that's always a big one. Um, assisting in the data creation. So obviously, anytime there's a bottleneck in your process, um, quite often it can be uh, people putting typos in attribute columns, um, incorrect information coming in, um, people not actually checking that they're allowed to go where they're going all those sorts of things. So anytime we can flag those sorts of things as quickly as possible, um, it saves the business time um, and it obviously stops us from you know, doing anything that we shouldn't be doing as well. We don't want to be going areas we're not allowed to, um, all those sorts of you know, requirements that we have as well. Um, you know, a little bit about all right, what else can we pull out of that in terms of visualising that data as well. Um, and my favourite part was it was probably the easiest thing to roll out as well. So I could build a single plug-in, it's really easy to install, geologists can install it so it can't be too hard. Um, <laughs> put it in there, um, if I need to make an update to it, it's easy, just drop it in a folder, they all go through, they update their plug-in, um, you know, no real dramas there. So yeah, anything we can do to obviously make it easier for the end user to update the plug-in as well and, and get themselves up and running. All right, so just to run through, I guess, what we have in some of those plugins, that was the idea here. So the biggest ones um, early on were just discovery of data. 
Um, so like I said, we're trying to centralise as much of that data into things like SQL databases. So a bunch of data is going in there, but we're also sourcing things like you know, WMS, WS feeds from other places. Um, we've got our own image web server where we're pushing out some data through there. Uh, we may even just have data that sits on a file server somewhere, whether it be an old you know, geopackage or a shapefile or whatever it might be, that might not necessarily need to go into the database, but we want it easily accessible. So how can we kind of go and make life a bit easier for people to get to that? Because there's so many different formats, um, the easiest way is obviously QLR files. So just build up a library of QLR files, um, and to make my life easy configuring it, um, it's actually just this simple little table here. So I've got a location, um, I've got you know, what kind of category I want to put it underneath, where's the QLR file, um, and we kind of build a catalog up from that. Um, the other big part of it was, because we're spread across so many different sites, how do we kind of filter it to regions? The people in Queensland aren't really interested in the geology information in the Pilbara. Um, so how can I kind of control that a little bit as well? So we added some sort of filtering capability into how we extract that data as well. Um, so it's just a dockable window for anyone that wants to understand the, I guess, the plug-in side of it um, with a few original filters at the top there. So you can turn them for whichever part of the country that you're working in, grab some data, drop it into the map, um, and it's pretty straightforward. So being a QR, it can come from basically anywhere. Um, Previously had to do things like try and set up SQL connections on individuals' laptops, and that is just painful, so this makes my life easier too. Um, and it does a bit of attribute filtering as well. So as part of that process, you know, for example, um, in this example, we're up in Queensland somewhere, adding some drilling data, and it just filters to just the information for there. So it's, it's kind of nice and handy like that. The other big bunch of data that we had, which was an absolute mess, was our geophysics data. Um, so that was existing in several different locations, so we kind of tried to consolidate that as best as we could. Um, there were around 8,000 images, so I definitely did not want to do what I just did on the previous slide where I had to create a spreadsheet and catalogue it all. Um, so in this case, um, we basically got the geophysics team to structure it into a nice folder structure, um, and then we trawl that folder structure every night, build a, a library and index from that, um, and then away we go, we can just essentially just do something like this, where we zoom to an area that we're interested in. There's a few little subcategories based on that folder structure, um, which has a ridiculous number of images in it, um, but then we can just filter based to our current extents, um, have a bit of a look through the list then of what's actually available where we are, um, and load in the appropriate you know, images as we need them um, and work from there. So yeah, just a sort of simple search and, and a load we go. Um, so clearly for these two, the benefits were around making my life easier. I'm not having to show people how to create WMS connections, SQL connections, all those sorts of things. Easy to roll out. Um, and yeah, certainly the geophysics side means that I don't have to do any management there. It just works, which is great. Um, we then came to some of our other data sets, which were quite large, um, which was our downhill imagery. So for all of the work that we've done, we would collated, um, I think it's actually about 670,000 images now of chip tray photos, core photos, things related to, to basically you know, the drill holes coming out of the ground. Um, all that image was sitting on a, on a file server. What the hell do you do with all of that and how do you find your way around it? Um, we had this great idea of let's thumbnail it. Um, took about two weeks of processing to convert all those images into little thumbnails. We actually used, um, converted them into text and stored them in the database as text. Um, which meant that we could then do things like suck it out in QGIS, but also into other applications if we needed to as well. Um, so in this case, um, again, a nice little button that you click on, find a particular hole that you might be interested in looking at. Um, in this case, pull up all the chip tray photos, um, grabs all of them, puts them in sequence, so you can scroll through and look at all of those images at the same time. Um, also go and fetch any other information we might have, so logging information, um, any assay results or anything like that that might have returned. So you can quickly rip your way through this and see what's actually interesting. Um, the cool thing about this with the table widget was actually, there are actually buttons those pictures with just an icon as the, the button. That was just my kind of like light bulb moment to get that to work anyway. Um, export the whole thing out as a strip, um, go and find just a high resolution version. So just a way of accessing that information that probably hadn't been used previously, um, and it just means that it's used more often. Um, so that was getting data out, getting data in. Um, constantly getting bad data is not much fun when you're the admin person. Um, so trying to get really good planning data in um, and using tools in QGIS to do that. 
So instead of having to get people to go find a template and fill in a template the right way, how about we just bring the template to them with QGIS? So designing a drill program, um, you know, we've got all the holes, um, there's not much information in there, just where they are and, you know, azimuths and things like that. All right, we need a value add to that. We need to know, you know, which tenement it's on, which POW is associated with, all those sorts of things. Um, how about we just create a nice little form to fill a bit of those things in. Um, we were constantly getting typos with things like tenement IDs, so data wouldn't ingest into a database, so that did my head in. Um, fun stuff like calculate which zone you're actually currently in. People would love to get that one wrong um, and go from there sort of thing. Um, same thing with our um, road data. So again, same process. You can just have simple empty lines. Um, the big one with that was doing things like, in this case, splitting when a line crosses over a tenement boundary. So we know which tenement each segment's in. So trying to teach people to do that, nah, don't need to do that. Let's just make a tool that does it for them. So this will split all the lines where they need to be split, assign the appropriate tenement values that need to be assigned. All the rest of it um, makes everyone nice and happy at that the other end. So, um, so yeah, obviously great benefits for that. Um, yeah, a lot of work prior to that, doing manual labour to try and fix all these problems with the data that came in. Now we get data in, it's pretty much perfect every time we get it and we can just quick, quick check on it and then just boom straight in the database and away we go. Um, a little bit more validation around that side of it as well. So again, just for the end user to make their life easier to understand um, if they've done it correctly um, before they send it to us. A um, little bit of validation to do things like make sure that there are holes available on that particular program of work to be able to use. Um, are the pads that are going to be produced by these holes um, compliant? Um, so this example here, there's a little one that pops up in red. Um, that's to let us know that it's actually outside of our allowable area to explore. Um, it's not in a, a cleared survey corridor for heritage and environment, things like that. Um, so it needs to be fixed before we can actually go out and do that. Um, and then the same thing again, obviously, with uh, the track side of things, if it's identifying anything like that. And again, picking up whether or not you've got available track length on those POWs, those tenements, all those things. So all these validation tools for the end user means that we get really clean data at our end, um, which means that we can push it out really quickly um, and get working in the field as, as fast as possible. Um, and the last one was, this has probably got nothing to do with exploration. This was more, I was just really upset with the poor quality of maps that we were always looking at in the, in the business. Um, we had so many different map templates floating around. Everyone had their own idea of what looked like a good map and what didn't. Um, so I just made a really simple tool um, to essentially like, take your current view, add a couple of little bits and pieces, you know, load an appropriate template as required. Um, one of the challenges I faced was originally we were one site, so I had all my templates in one zone, which was nice and easy. Um, we then moved across all the countries, so then I had to do calculations for which MJ zones we were in, um, apply appropriate um, projections, all those sorts of fun things. Um, so it does all of that now, so it doesn't matter where you are in the country, you create a map, it picks the zone that you're in, applies the right easings, northern grids, all that kind of stuff, scale bars, legends, all that, all that fun stuff that we need as, as sort of part of that. Um, and like I said, that obviously saves you a lot of time um, from, from the map side of things, but also it just gives us a nice bit of consistency with maps being shared around the business as well. So, um, and that is pretty much it. Mm -hmm.